The 2017 election isn't nearly as jam-packed as 2016, but that doesn't mean the ballot is empty. This year, CMC, Colorado Mountain College, is asking for a mill levy increase of $3 on every $100,000 of taxable property. This is to keep pace with incredible growth on the front range and make sure that tuition remains affordable for locals. A week before election day, we talked with Glenn Davis, president of the CMC Board of Trustees, for a discussion on the intricacies of Colorado tax law and why a little more in tax revenue can go a long way at CMC. You know, the, the impacts of Gallagher, which is now a 35-year-old um, amendment to the Constitution, are now starting to come into view and it's conceivable that nobody really envisioned the kinds of consequences that Gallagher may actually um, impact a lot of the taxing districts that rely upon property tax support, what that impact might be. So um, I, I think the reason that the trustees felt this was important to go before the uh, electorate was you know, the, the question about should the college board have the ability to modify the impact of, of Gallagher, I think the, the trustees felt that was a question that the electorate needed to speak in on. Okay. Yeah, and, and that does make sense, too, especially since, you know, it, it does go a little deeper than Gallagher, just the fact that there is also a Tabor that requires that any time there's a tax change, it's a, it has to go to a vote. Um, sure. And when did, you know, when did, uh, I guess, the CMC trustees really start seeing the impacts of Gallagher and the impacts that, you know, the, the rising population on the front range was having on CMC? Or is this almost a forward-looking thing, looking ahead to what it could do? Well, it's a little bit of both. So the initial fiscal impact was felt in the current fiscal year. Okay. Point nine million dollars worth of impact based on the adjustment that the Gallagher Amendment required. But it really the the primary factor in the ballot initiative is the forward looking forecasted potential impacts. And I need to be keep clear about the potential. They're just forecasts. Mm-hmm. They may or may not be valid when the actual uh, numbers come in in years to come. Um, but as as we consider the forecast, there is the possibility, at least, that the financial impacts caused by galleries could be pretty significant. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it seems like it would be especially significant because, you know, looking through um, some of the numbers for CMC, uh, the budget that CMC operates on, is not enormous, especially compared to, like, say, like a public university like uh, like CSU or CU. Um, sure. And so it, it seems like, you know, a change um, to taxes and all that stuff wouldn't have that much of an impact on – it wouldn't seem like it would have that much of an impact. What kind of an impact will it have or could it have on CMC in the future and the, the operating budget you guys have of about $66 million? Yeah, well, it, it, the uh – the forecast of the potential impact for the next adjustment period is around six million dollars, and that's a six million dollar fiscal year impact. Okay. So that represents just shy of ten percent of the overall college budget, which is a major hit. <laughs> it is now. Yeah. You know, the college, thankfully, has some blessings to count, which include that it's in pretty good financial condition at the moment. It might be able to manage that impact at that time as well, too. I think I think the reason that 4B seemed to be so important for the trustees was not any single year potential fiscal impact. It was the aggregation and impact over time. So imagine every two years there's a 10% reduction in revenue to the college. Mm-hmm. At some point, the college will have some really hard choices to make. Um, can it continue to reduce expenses? At some point, the need to reduce expenses may be so dramatic um, that it will 
be forced to having to start to cut programming. Mm-hmm. Or if it makes the choice that it should not cut programming because there are certain businesses within all of our communities that rely on the graduates of CMC. Think of a nursing program, for example. Um, it will maybe have to start dramatically increasing the tuition price to the students that it serves. All right. So it's kind of a, a rock and a hard price almost situation that um – at this point, CMC, it seems like the college has continued to, to grow pretty healthy over the past couple of years. Is, is that the truth, uh, you know, that the, the college has been able to keep tuition down and, afford, and you know, provide more, better programs for folks in the communities? Well, I, I think enrollment numbers this year are up pleasingly. Okay. Um, but like all community colleges, it's typically inverse – inversely correlated to economic conditions. Mm-hmm. Times are tough. People go take more community college co- courses so they can hopefully retrain for whatever the job opportunities might be. When the economy improves, enrollments at community colleges typically suffer a little bit. Okay. Um, so the over time, college enrollment numbers have grown a little bit, but this year they're up dramatically, which is really, really pleasing because that – rarely happens when economic conditions are good. And, um, you know, our, our perception is that economic conditions are good, and so the enrollment increase has been pretty pleasing. In the end, uh, what kind of impacts uh, would this amendment, you know, what kind of protections would a yes vote afford to CMC and to CMC students and to this whole CMC, you know, uh, just network in general? Yeah, so the primary protection is the property tax revenue base. So this, to be clear, does not give the trustees carte blanche to raise the mill levy at their discretion. It only can raise the mill levy to infill for the property tax reduction only caused by Gallagher. That means if, if if the college had the ability to maintain that, property tax revenue base, then it does not have to continue to cut expenses should Gallagher impacts continue to be negative, nor does it have to consider dramatic increases to tuition pricing. And it can maintain all of the programming that our communities depend upon. Okay. Okay. Great. Um what what are some of the uh concerns you've been hearing maybe from from voters or even the the board itself um about this amendment um you know whether it passes or doesn't i guess what, what what's the the possible cons yeah so i haven't heard any um any concerns from the board itself but just the anecdotal input that i've been getting is the concern that this would in fact be uh, raising the mill levy for commercial properties. So if you're a residential property owner, um, all it does is, is keep a contemplated reduction from occurring. Mm-hmm. The property taxes that a residential owner would pay would stay the same. But on the commercial side, it, it would entail uh, an increase Some of the nature of the complexities of what Gallagher created, unfortunately. <laughs> True. True, true. But it, it, there is the possibility. Now you're saying there's the possibility that it could lead to an increase for commercial or that that's not part of this at all. Oh, no, it, it is a distinct possibility. It is a distinct possibility. Okay. Now, when it comes down to it, I guess uh, if you want to give personal opinion or even the opinion of the board or, or, or whatever, uh, what are your um, thoughts on that side of things that, oh, it's going to increase – expenditures for my business, not just my property, but for my business. Um, what what would you say that, uh, you know, CMC provides in return? Well, um, the two primary beneficiaries of the college are its students, but also so many of the businesses who are uh, active in our communities who rely on students uh, from CMC to ultimately fill in for accounting or um, police and emergency services or nursing or teaching. Um, um, So 
we often forget that community colleges really kind of have dual constituencies. It's not just the students, but it's also the employers in our town. So, um, yes, it would be a bit more of a burden on commercial property owners. Um, but ultimately, you know, they are the beneficiaries of so many of the students that CMC produces. So uh, I'm not trying to shift the burden to commercial property owners, but hopefully people understand that um, it still is a worthwhile investment to make sure that the students who come to CMC um, can afford to do so so that they can be re uh, returned out to the working world with the skill sets that our commercial enterprises depend upon. Okay. Um, one question, not sure if you know, uh, do properties like ski resorts factor into this? Um, or if they own commercial property okay. in the district that CMC serves, then yes. Okay. I would have to look into that, just seeing, you know, about the uh, the on-mountain amenities that they have, because, you know, it seems like most of the uh, the property that ski, ski resorts have, you know, thinking of Breckenridge, sure, they own some stuff here and there throughout town, and at the base of the mountain, it might not be on forest service land, but I'm wondering if it applies to things on forest service land, such as, you know... I, I don't believe so. Okay. Gotcha. But I, I, you know, I'm not the expert to quote on that. Yeah. I'll... I'll I'll have to look into that because that does add a, an interesting wrinkle to it, especially, you know, again, thinking that they own so much property and it's probably valued so much more than you would expect that they are probably the ones who might have a little concern with it. Um, but sure. outside of that, I guess uh, the final question is then, um, what are you hoping uh, CMC with a yes vote would be able to do? Continue providing the standard of uh, of education that you guys have had for for fifty some odd years. Yeah, just to continue to serve both students and our communities at at a level that uh, our communities have come to expect and depend upon. Okay, great. And and the, and the board, uh, like you were saying at this point, pretty convinced that this is a good way to make sure that happens. Better to do this than try to scramble to find a solution in the future. Well, the board's, the board's true position is that this issue needs to be presented to the electorate for the electorate to weigh in on, because ultimately the electorate is what weighed in on Gallagher that has kind of created the situation. Um, but, you know, I, I think the trustees would... Uh, express that it would be beneficial to try to preserve the revenue base of the college so we did not have to start escalating tuition. I don't think the trustees are at all invested in a, this sort of front-range growth versus mountain resort area. It just It's the nature of the beast. Our economy in the front range is, is really good, and now there are some consequences based on uh, some constitutional provisions that we have to deal with. So I'm not sure anyone could have ever envisioned that this is that this would actually be a consequence of a really robust front-range economy. 